what is up you guys how are you doing i know that currently we are living in a very difficult situation especially in the united states i'm not based in the us but i'm following closely on what's happening and i'm with all of you i'm posting more content on anti-racism on my instagram so if you're not following me yet go there but i wanted to say that i am back with my content it is not to be insensitive to the situation but I do believe that the content that I create is educational and education is one of the best ways that we can increase diversity in tech. My focus has been on women, as we know. Women of colour only make up about 3% of the workforce in tech and that is something that I am going to be also raising as a topic on my Instagram. So go and follow me there if you want to hear more about this. I do believe that moving forward doesn't mean that we're moving back to normal, that we're going to anything that resembles normal as it was. And I hope that we can keep this momentum going because this is not a moment, this is a movement as someone posted on Instagram. And we didn't go to Coachella. We're not posting for just one week. We are taking this, we are taking action and I hope you are too. And I hope that we can together dismantle the system that still holds up oppression and ideals of white supremacy and let's do the work let's be good allies and let's educate ourselves on the situation and take action where we can with that said i wanted to give you five tips in five minutes on how you can quickly improve your data analysis and these are quite basic but often forgotten and that is exactly why it's a good reminder of things that you can do very easily very quickly to check that your you know analysis is in ship shape before you go Let's roll the clock. Number one is write a TLDR. If you don't know what a TLDR is, it is a short section in the beginning of your analysis um, that, you know, shortens for too lazy didn't read, which is too much of how business communications go these days. But if you have a captivating, engaging TLDR, it is much more likely that people will actually read through your analysis and engage with it. So having a snapshot of your results and what the impact is, is super important. So have one of those. That's tip number one. Tip number two is qualify your units, which means that when you're giving some kind of a result with a unit, so say like 100 hours, you're saving 100 hours with the change that you're suggesting based on your analysis. That alone isn't enough because if you are someone who doesn't normally work with that data, they don't have the intuition of telling 100 hours when, 100 hours in what, 100 hours where. And so qualifying your unit saying 100 hours a week in this particular part of the business or in this line of work, that gives a whole context and answers a lot of questions that you might be answering after you actually wrote the analysis and people read it because they didn't understand the full impact or they might not even ask the question and then you're kind of losing part of the impact of your analysis. So always qualify your units. Tip number three, avoid adding information that doesn't add value to your analysis. Sometimes you might want to give people more context than is necessary, give them the full understanding of all the work that has been going on in this particular work stream or work area. And a lot of the times that's not necessary. What you might want to do, however, is deep link in your analysis and make sure that wherever you're talking about a particular topic that someone might not be completely familiar with, they understand as a concept, but if they want to know more, rather have links to previous work, previous projects or ongoing work but don't put in information that might make your analysis lengthier than it has to be because that also loses people's interest and they don't have time to, you know, read through pages and pages of analysis unless that's their job and even then people kind of don't. Tip number four, represent units in both absolute terms and percentages. And this is super important because when you're saying that, you know, we saved 100 hours, let's keep it that, um, we saved 100 hours, how much of the total amount of hours that is being put into this particular work is it? Is it 50%? Is it 2.2%? Is like, what is the, what is the scale? So when you're telling people that, you know, you're saving a hundred hours, they don't necessarily know how impactful that is. But at the same time, you might be saying that we are saving 50% of hours um, in this particular work. But at the same time, like when you don't know the absolute comparison point of like how many hours are normally put into this, you're kind of missing a part of that impact again. Cause like if you're saving two hours, even if it's 50% of the actual work, it doesn't necessarily, you know, 
make that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. And it all depends on that context and having those absolute and percentage terms together actually gives you more of that context. And tip number five, which is proofread and peer read. Always, always, always proofread your text. Make sure that you've opened up your acronyms at least once and you don't have typos, you don't have silly little mistakes, and then peer read. Find a peer that isn't necessarily in your team but has a similar understanding about the topic as your intended audience and have them read through your analysis. Because when they read through that analysis, what they can point out to you is where they have extra questions. And you want to answer those questions within that particular analysis document. Because the more questions people have, the less likely they are going to be actually acting on that analysis. So wherever they have little questions like, I don't quite understand the context here, you want to ask them if they get bored reading your analysis at any point, because then you might need to make things shorter. You might need to make things more punchy. You might need to actually figure out, is the order correct? And that's another question that you can ask them is like, does the order of things make sense? Is the flow of the narrative that you want to build actually sensible so that it's as easy as possible for your reader to read through, understand, and actually then take action on your analysis. So peer reading essentially is a great way to test for a narrative clarity and amount of information. Whew, that was an information. Those were five tips on how to make your analysis better quickly and easily and that you can put into practice immediately. If you like this video and found these tips helpful, hit the like button. I would also really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And I'm also on Instagram where I post daily content on data, working in tech and career advice. If any of those topics are of interest to you, you are more than welcome to follow me on that side of things. And I'm hoping to see you in my next video. Cheers.